gold jumps to new record highs. China's banks cut lending rates more than expected to jolt demand. Iron ore and oil prices fall after China's stimulus disappointment. And the RBA is encouraged by recent signs that rate cut bets are being pushed out after strong data. That's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ chief economist for Greater China, Raymond Yun, explains why investors weren't too enamored by China's recent property support package. In the end, the ministry delivered a package to support a healthy development of the housing policy. So that is a perhaps a little bit of shortfall in expectation by people who are interested in growth-boosting measures. But first in 5 and 5 with ANZ, global stocks fell around 0.5% overnight as US Treasury yields kept rising on a recalibration of expectations about how quickly the Fed might cut to not as quick as before. The S&P 500 was down 0.4% at 4am Sydney Melbourne time, while the Eurostock 600 fell 0.7% and the Dow was down 0.6%. US two-year Treasury yields rose 7 basis points to 4.02% and the 10-year rose 10 basis points to 4.18%. But that rise in interest rates did nothing to stop the gold price jumping to a fresh record high of 2,755 US dollars an ounce overnight. It was at 2,739 at 4am. Meanwhile in China, the local CSI 300 index rose a quarter of a percent after Chinese banks yesterday cut their key one in five year lending rates by 25 basis points. That was more than a market expected and five basis points more than the most recent rate cut by the central bank. ANZ senior China strategist Xiao Pengxing says that more is needed as part of the rolling stimulus drive of recent weeks. I think they will be able to more cut for LPR, reflect the authorities' want to restart the domestic activity. However, it's still too late and too small in our view because China is still in deflation spiral at this moment. It will need a great effort to step out the deflation. 25 bips or 20 bips cut to the interest rate will be insufficient for it. Number two. Xiaopang says further support isn't likely to come from the central bank though, leaving the work to fiscal measures. We don't expect the PBOC to cut interest rate again in the rest of this year. In 20 2025, we expect the PBOC to cut 7-day reverse repo rate by another 30 bips. So for this year, in Q4, we expect the PBOC will observe the data first to make the next decision. The US dollar rose 0.4% by 4 a.m. Sydney to Melbourne time with those higher treasury yields. We saw the Aussie dollar fall 0.67% to 66.62 US cents and the Kiwi fell 0.58% to 60.35 US cents. Number three, one support for the Aussie dollar was a speech by RBA Deputy Governor Andrew Hauser, who said the response of market interest rates to recent data was encouraging. Market bets for the first cut by the RBA pushed out to April 2025 from November after strong September jobs data. ANZ Head of Australian Economics Adam Boyton says the comments weren't too surprising though. We still think February, notwithstanding the robust tone to jobs growth in Australia over the past six months, I think that by the time we get to February, the labour market will be a little cooler, that the pace of jobs growth will likely have softened, just given the ongoing softness in GDP growth that's been apparent for quite some time, and that the inflation picture. By the time, of course, we get not just the Q3 CPI at the end of this month, but also the Q4 CPI at the end of January should be giving the RBA sufficient comfort that inflation is heading back to the target band. Number four. Back to that disappointment in China's recent stimulus efforts, it has flowed through to a number of commodity prices, including iron ore. It fell on the day property market measures were announced last week. ANZ senior commodity strategist Daniel Hines says the level of support just hasn't been what was expected. For the moment, Beijing appears to be reluctant to really throw the huge amount of fiscal stimulus measures that we've seen in the past that would generate new growth and demand. So I suspect we're going to see commodity markets continually disappointed, I suppose, unless there is a real shift in the thinking from Beijing around how to support their economy. Number five. That disappointment also put downward pressure on oil prices this week. Low Brent crude was up 1.4% this morning at 74.13 US dollars a barrel. It had been closer to $80 a barrel 10 days ago. Here's Daniel again. 
the easing sort of risks of supply disruptions in the oil market have allowed investors to sort of refocus on that demand side of the equation. And yeah, there's certainly some uh, areas of concern there. In China, not only do we have that subdued economic growth emanating from the uh, the economy there, we also have the rising sort of influence of the energy transition, in particular, the amount of oil now being displaced by the electric vehicle market. Daniel Hines there. Now, in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ Chief Economist for Greater China, Raymond Yung, takes us through China's recently announced property sector support package, which was the source of much of that recent investor disappointment. I think the market was expecting the Ministry of Housing to deliver a stimulus package, but in the end, the ministry delivered a package to support a healthy development of the housing policy. So that's just a perhaps a little bit of shortfall in expectation by people who are interested in any form of growth boosting measures delivered by the housing ministry. But they do in lifted the white list program, which is a commercial commercial lend uh, or the lending program by commercial banks support by the government to activate the construction site of uh, residential property and also to uh, be able to support some property related activities by commercial banks and the scale has been lifted to 4 trillion renminbi by the end of this year and so far in the first 10 months, the program has already pledged 2.2 trillion, which means that there will still be a substantial amount of funding support backed by the government, pledged by commercial banks to the property sector. What sort of time frame are they looking at to stabilise the property market? I believe, or the sense that I've got from the press briefing is that the ministry is quickening all the policy or the measures that have already been announced in the last two weeks, including mortgage rate cut. So the overall tone of the press briefing is that different ministries responding to the top leaders' mandate to stabilise the housing sector and they are executing or expediting the whole process of the supportive package. Uh, The housing sector and the construction sector will benefit from the execution of the different policy measures by both the central government and also the local authorities. Can you take us through those plans to renovate urban village houses? Basically, is a renewal plan to upgrade the quality of life, the uh, housing condition of the villages or the undeveloped park of China. So that is a standing policy supported by the government, but uh, now they are saying they quickened their plan to support 1 million uh, villages household to upgrade or to urbanize their living standards. The Minister Yi also reiterated the overall housing policy of China that is by under the model of affordable plus market, which means that the majority of Chinese residents will be supported by affordable housing, young people will get support from leasing rather than a very expensive purchase of apartments in uh, cities and in the urban area. But for those who are looking for upgrading, the living condition will also be supported by the private market, which is indirectly uh, supported by the different type of funding support at the moment to the private sector market. So the overall policy has not changed, but it is about execution to improve the overall housing condition. And that's why I uh, said, Today's uh, briefing is more to do with the high healthy development of China housing rather than a V-shaped recovery of the property transaction or the property market. Do you expect there's any more to come in terms of housing market policy? The overall package or stimulus package involves different ministries and even for this uh, Ministry of Housing briefing also include representatives from the, the central banks, from the Ministry of Finance and one response by the representative from Ministry of Finance also said that there will be more to do to support the uh, funding condition delivered by the Ministry of Housing which means that they are exploring the size and the scale of the fiscal support to the housing development. So I expect that the Ministry of Finance will deliver a more specific number in terms of the amount of government bonds issued and how the local governments can use the funds issued to support the housing sector recovery. Raymond Young there. I'm Bernard Hickey, back from some leave. Thanks again to Alex Tarrant for filling in. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Tuesday, October the 22nd. Catch you tomorrow with a look at how Australian consumers might be feeling as those RBA rate cut expectations get pushed out.
This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or eBay.